Hi guys and welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In today's video we're going to take another look at Power Query and particularly some of the basics of how you can use Power Query to automatically tidy up data within your table. Now in this video I'm using some of the tables that are included in Microsoft's Power Query tutorial which you can find by going to your file tab, clicking on new and searching for Power Query. Microsoft also have a number of videos on their website where they run through some of the basics of Power Query, but I'm essentially going to summarize the data they've got on their website in a slightly briefer format. So let's jump right in. Now in our workbook, we have two tabs. We've got our sales data and some categories. For now, we're just going to look at the sales data. Let's say this is an automatic download from an internal system and it comes out in this format. And what we want to use Power Query for is to go through a number of steps to clean this up so it's in a format where we can do analysis much, much easier. Now to do this, what we first want to do is have our data formatted as a table. In this instance, it already is. The table is called Table Product Sales. If it weren't already formatted as a table, we can go to Insert and here in the Tables group, we can click on Table and we'll get this table inserted. I've got a number of other videos on tables in Excel, which I can link to in the description below. So once we've got our data in the table, we come over to our data tab. We go to the get and transform data group over here and click on from table range. And what it will do is we'll automatically open up this Power Query Editor box and import our table into it. Now the Power Query Editor box will appear over your Excel. You won't be able to edit in Excel while it's open, but as soon as you close and load, you'll be able to ed edit your Excel workbook again. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to check that it's picked up our heading names automatically, which in this instance it has. You can see over here that it's actually picked up our source data and then changed some types so it's picked up what it thinks some of the formats of these columns are. If your header name hadn't picked up, you could come over to your home tab and click this first row, use first row as headers box, and it would pick up this first row and use it as a header. So if we were to click on that now, you'll see it's put that first row in as a header. It's not what we want. So what we want to do is we want to undo these two steps that have now appeared by just clicking on these little X's. And what we can now do is we can click into our headers and rename them to something that is a bit more sensible. So let's call this one product. We will double click into this one and call it sales wrap. We'll call this one order date. We'll just take out the DT at the start and add a space in. And we'll call this one total sales. Now that our data is imported into Power Query, we'll move on to having a look at how you can start to transform your data. Now in this workbook, on this order date, you'll see that my date is formatted as date and the time. And say I just want this as a date. What we can do is we can select that column, go to data type, it says date slash time, Click on the drop down, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. We just want to change it to date. And you'll see that it's updated those, so they're just showing the date. If we were to do something similar with our total sales column and say I want to convert it to currency, we can click on currency here. Now we'll change and update the currency type when we load the table later. I wouldn't worry too much about it at the moment. In Power Query, it won't show with the currency symbol at the front. It's just noted that the data type is a currency. Now in our next step, what we want to do is we want to remove these total sales rep with the blank data and the sums in it. Now there's a few ways of filtering data. What we can do is we can simply select and remove the total sales rep. However, if there's a number of total columns that aren't consistent, it might be easier to use text filter. So we want text filter to, to not begin with, so it does not begin with, and we want to include the word total. And if we click OK, 
you'll see that it's filtered out all those total rows. Now in our next step, we're going to split out the sales rep column by first name and last name. So to do this, what we do is we click on the column, right click, come down to the split column option. And in this instance, we're going to split it by delimiter, which is essentially, I'm going to pick the space and get it to separate by that character. You can also do it by the number of character or by certain positions within your cell. And there's a number of other options such as uppercase to lowercase. So picking this first option, we'll get the delimiter, split column by delimiter box opened. We want to split it by space. You'll see there's a number of different options, but we're going to leave it on space. And we're going to do it at each occurrence of the delimiter. You can do it just on the leftmost or the rightmost version if you've got a number of different spaces within your cell. And we're just going to click OK. And then we'll have our first name and our last name. I'm going to rename my headers so that they make a little bit more sense. So we're going to call this sales rep first name and sales rep last name. Now we can also use Power Query to add in additional columns. So say I want to know what month this date is. We can click on our order date column, go to add column, and we can use column from examples. So if we click on this, and then start to type in our first box, January. What it's done is it's picked up that it's January for the first few, then February, March, April, May, all the way down to June. And once we're happy it's picked up our data correctly, we'll just click OK, and you'll see that it's added in your month. In a similar way, we can do the same thing with days of the week. So if we click on the first one and start to type, we've got Monday, so we've got day of the week, you'll see that it's gone through picking up what day of the week each of these are and clicking on OK. It's now added in that column as well. Now we might, might want to add in another column, but we want it to combine all these. So say we want to say Monday, the 15th of January, 2018. If we click down to the next one, you'll see that it's starting to pick these up. So it's picked up our Monday and our Saturday, okay. It's picked up that it's January, okay. The dates are all the 15th, which isn't correct. So we're just gonna to need to go through and teach a little bit more. So in this instance, this is gonna be a 20. And we'll see now this is saying 20th, 27th, but they're all coming up as January now. So we want to teach it that this is actually February. It should start to pick up automatically. You've now, after going through those first four columns, given it enough information to pick up automatically what your pattern is. We click OK. It's now loaded that in. And say so I don't want these columns, I can remove them and just keep this column here. However, for now, I'm just going to leave them in. So I'll undo that last step. Now, another thing that you can do within Power Query is you can add a custom column. Now this is useful when you essentially want to use a formula to try and determine what your results in a column are going to be. So say you want a 5% bonus when people have achieved sales over 15K. I'm going to click on this total sales column, click on custom column, and we'll call this bonus. Now in this custom column box, you're essentially adding in an Excel formula. However, the way it's structured is slightly different. You can learn a little bit more about Power Query formulas by clicking on this link here. But in this simple example, we're gonna use an if function. So we want if our total sales is greater than, let's say 15,000, then, so instead of a comma, you put in the word then. We want our total sales by 0.05, so 5% else we want a zero. And once your formula is right, you'll see this little tick down the bottom saying no syntax errors have been detected. And if we click on OK, 
you'll see that you get a value in everything that is where this is above 15,000. If you wanted to change this at any point, you could click in to this little gearbox symbol here on that step and you can change. So if I were to say to change this down to, to 12,000 and the bonus down to 3% and click OK, you'd see that you're then getting results in more rows. And again, I'm just going to note this data type down as currency. Now, what I've done with my Power Query is I've clicked on Close and Load to go back into my Excel for now. What I want to do here is we've got our products down the side, but there is a top level category. And we want to add this table in so we can get this top level category into our main table. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this category table and load it into Power Query. So we're going to click from table range. It adds into Power Query. You can see on the side here, we've now got this table product sales and our categories. We're just going to click close and load for now. And that's now loaded in. If we come back to this product sales table and go to query and edit, we can now join our tables together. And we do this by coming into our table, coming to merge queries, merge queries as new, which essentially means it's going to make a new table. Our first table is this product sales. We want to merge our product column with our second table, which is this categories one, and again, our product column. And it should join them together. You'll see that it's matching 15 and 15 rows on the first table. So if we click OK, we will get a new table called Merge 1. We can rename this by double clicking. Let's just call it Final Sales for now. And you'll see that all the way over on the side over here, we've got this new column. It doesn't make much sense, it's sort of saying table at the moment. So we want to filter it so only the category tab is showing. So if we click OK, you'll see you get your overarching category. And I want to move this so it's right back at the beginning. And now we can click Close and Load. And we'll get our final sales table all loaded in. Now I'm going to, in this particular table, I'm going to change these two currency options to currency. You can format this whatever you like. And you can see that it's loaded in as a new query. So you can go back to any of these previous queries you've looked at. So if I want to go back into my product sales query, go to query and click on edit. It will take me back in and I can review by going through this column over here, all the steps that we've gone through. Now you'll notice that some of them are potentially not very clear exactly what you've done. As you go through, you can right click in here and click rename. So filter rows, I can call that say remove total rows. You know, this can be called split names. So rename, split first name, last name. And you can rename each of them so you know what the step was. It means you can always go back and walk through each step to make sure it's doing exactly what you want it to. So if we close that down. Now the benefit of this is if we go back to our very original table and was to add in more data down the bottom. So let's add in some more data here. So once we've added our new data in, what we can do is come up to our data tab, click on refresh all. Now if we come over to our final sales table, you'll see that those new July dates have all been added in, including the category, the bonus calculation, everything's been done automatically without you having to go through all those steps again. If you notice, say in this instance, I haven't updated the header here, we can go back into our table click on query and edit and just quickly edit our header. Mm -hmm. 
Also, you'll notice when I refreshed, the currency stayed as the currency I set it at within this table. So that's a really quick overview of some of the basics of how you can use Power Query to edit and transform your data automatically. This can be really useful if you've got rather large data sets that say you've downloaded from a database, and it's not in a particularly useful format to do analysis on. By setting up these steps once, you can then transform your data to easily be able to run reports, create dashboards, or analyze things in a much easier way. I hope that you found this video useful. I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up, liked and subscribed. Remember to also hit the bell notifications so you get a little notification whenever I release new videos. And I do look forward to seeing you in the next video.